Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar called What's New with CK12? I'm Laramie, and my colleague Katie and I will be walking you through the latest, newest releases from CK12, including Flexi updates, additional Flexbook offerings, new interactivity, and our student review, and even more. Thanks, Laramie. So we're so glad to have you guys with us today and are excited to share everything that CK12 has been working on to support student learning and assist you with teaching. Our team is constantly updating our platform to make the experience more seamless for you and to offer you the latest in learning and technological tools for your class or independent learners. Our goal in this session is to give you an overview of our current unified offerings and show you the power of the CK12 Flexbook 2.0 platform complete with Flexi and our student review features. Beyond that, we'll explore the newest offerings from our content team, as well as additional support resources. Now, before we actually get started today, I wanna to make sure everyone's comfortable with the two Zoom windows. You should see two different options on your Zoom screen. One should say Q&A and one chat. During today's presentation, whenever you have a question that you'd like to ask the CK12 team and have them answer, please post it in the Q&A window. That's the window we'll be monitoring throughout the presentation. The chat window is a place for community conversation. We'd love for you all to introduce yourselves. It looks like that's already happening and we have people from all over the world. I see Croatia, Haiti, uh, New England, Texas, uh, everywhere. Wonderful to see you all. If you're an educator, as you've already been doing, please feel free to share where you live in the subject that you teach. Just make sure that in the chat window, you're sending any general posts to all the panelists and attendees. I think it actually says everyone and not just CK12 or the panelists. In addition to answering questions via text, we'll break a few times to answer questions live. And we'll also stay on at the end of the webinar to address any unanswered questions. So please, please recognize we'll be here if anything else happens at the end of the call. Also, we're recording, recording this webinar, and it'll be available at www.ck12.org slash webinars in the archive section sometime in the next 24 hours, in, in case you wanna revisit anything we've learned today or share the presentation with a friend or a colleague. So with a lot, let's get started. Now for CK12, our mission has always been about learning and access and helping teachers guide students through this journey. With this in mind, last year we launched our student tutor, which checks for student understanding, gives students feedback, guides their learning, and much more. The corresponding teacher assistant saves teachers time and gives them the information they need to improve learning in the form of reports, insights, notifications, and more. Over the course of the year, we continue to enhance these features and want to share with you now the newest live and upcoming enhancements. If you're new to CK12 or these particular features, we do recommend that you go ahead and use either of these quick links, ck12.org slash student tutor or ck12.org slash teacher assistant with a hyphen in between. And then that will allow you to go to those pages and learn more about the key offerings that the new updates are based on. So one of the options, especially for our students is that they can ask Flexi questions. And that allows uh, Flexi to provide interactive examples, answer those specific questions and do more to help them understand the main concepts and lessons, or simply to satisfy their curiosity about things like what size mirror do you need to see your whole body at once or how heavy is the earth? Now we have added this past year. So kind of the newer piece of that is that there's more small talk capabilities. So if they ask a question that maybe doesn't make sense for Flexi to answer, Flexi can come back with something and give them a reply and keep that conversation going. And also the ability to answer basic computations. So if students are asking what's the square root of nine, convert something from feet to inches, those opportunities are now available in Flexi. And this is currently still being beta tested and worked out and promoted for all of you in our science content. So go ahead and check the Ask Flexi options within any Flexbook 2.0 for science. Another component of Flexi and our student tutor is the ability to help students stay on track and guide them in their learning. And with that, we continue to add to these notifications and smart reminders for students. This starts with basic telling students about new completed or upcoming assignments. 
And then going beyond that by encouraging them to go back, review a concept, or even self-assess using our unit challenges. Now those unit challenges are just for students. They help them know what they need to study more before upcoming quizzes and tests and are built in and spaced in our Flexbooks for them to access. For all of you educators out there, don't think that we forgot about you. Our newest features for Flexi include expanded notifications regarding assignments and insights, as well as the ability to nudge a student, which sends a notification to them regarding work they might be missing or struggling with. You'll see within insights, some ideas on potential students you might wanna to nudge to help them finish their work or explore further. And then shortly, you'll be able to ask Flexi for help with key tasks a teacher undertakes on our platform. So for example, how do I set up a class or how do I add an image to a Flexbook lesson, different things like that, um, as well as seeing insights. So you'll get quick answers or videos that help you work through that. Um, and that is an upcoming feature this fall. So keep an eye out for that. Now, last year, you guys probably started seeing our class insights and recommendations. Our initial insights included skill level, and time spent on a lesson. And now we've moved to the full class mapping of student skill levels compared to engagement with that particular lesson. Factoring in the time spent, the exploration of interactives, inline questions answered and more, you can quickly see effort and performance for your class as a whole. If you click on any individual student, you can drill down more into how and where they spent their time on that particular lesson. Beyond the whole class graph, CK12 offers insights and recommendations for learning. If multiple students all struggled with the same question or questions, we'll point those out so you can start class with that as a review. If students who did well all explored a particular interactive, we might recommend that other students check it out as well. If you don't have a class yet, but you wanna explore this, no worries. Just go to a Flexbook 2.0 lesson, click on insights at the top right of any lesson there, and choose the demo class to explore and see how this would work for your particular class. If you do have a class set up on CK12 or one of our integrated learning management systems, then go ahead, open a lesson that you assigned from a Flexbook 2.0 and explore the insights that match to that particular lesson once students start turning them in. One of the newest features that we have released is just this fall in our student review. While our Flexbook 2.0 pulled together core lessons enhanced with interactivity, adaptive practice, and related learning modalities, this new review feature helps students quickly access that key information and expand their understanding through questions and other resources. So we listened to feedback from students and built out this toolbar to make review and continued learning easy to access. Note that we're starting with making this available for students who are exploring our newest science Flexbooks. When students click on the review option, they can start by checking out the overview. This is a bulleted list summarizing the key ideas from that science lesson. Below that, they'll often see vocabulary terms. They can use the pop-ups to refresh their memory or test their knowledge of the definitions of key terms. Students can challenge their comprehension with questions and matching flex cards. Think of them like flashcards. To go further, they can always continue attached adaptive practice or use the memory boost options available for a particular concept. Now, one tip regarding our student review, if you're a teacher and wanna see these review options, a pro tip is to simply sign out and explore as a student across our site. If you're a student, check this out in our science stuff and keep an eye out in the future for review options in other subjects. Beyond the review features that we put in that toolbar, we pulled out some core questions that students have asked Flexi about a particular concept. Knowing that students can learn as much from hearing other students' questions as asking their own, we've made it easy for them to explore previously asked questions and ask more. Next to that, students can easily access the related content, which is often found in the toolbar for a Flexbook 2.0 lesson. That toolbar for most places outside of the student review is that grid on the top right, We've now pulled it out of that broader thing and put it right in this review toolbar to make it relevant and easy to access for students. And these include videos, interactives, study guides, real world applications, and more 
they can expand and support their learning from each topic using a variety of different modalities. So we're gonna stop kind of at that piece in terms of this part. I'm gonna actually go live and show you what this looks like on our site. So let me start by sharing a student view. So here I'm logged in as a student. This is our homepage. So let's look at some of the pieces that a student might see. So if I go to a particular topic, let's say I am taking a physical science class. I can go ahead here, click on my physical science. If I'm using the CK12 book, we're good to go. And then I can navigate to a particular section. Let's say we'll go to section chapter two. And these are the unit challenges I was mentioning. They're spaced periodically if I'm a student. I can go ahead and click on that, unlock it, try out some questions, get a sense of how I'm doing on the topics that are covered in the sections before that. You can see that I have done a section on mixture. That one was assigned to me, so I've actually completed it. And then I can go to physical change and I can start maybe working on the next section. Now, if I've already studied this topic somewhere else, maybe I've actually read through this particular topic, I can see here this review bar. And so instead of going through the lesson itself, I'm going to go ahead and click on review. And here you'll see bulleted list of overview. So kind of key summary points for that lesson. I can hover over any of this vocabulary to check out what's happening. Remind myself what these different pieces mean. Here are the questions and flex cards. So some physical changes involve chemical reactions. Let's say if I guess that is true, I can check that. Maybe not. Let's try that again. Or I can check my flex card and remember this says physical changes. So maybe a physical change doesn't actually involve a chemical change at the same time. So let's go ahead and click false. And I can check and learn and understand as I go through. Try the same for my next question. Or if I want more, start that practice and work my way through a particular topic. Flexi down here, I can open up and you'll see I got some chatbot options so I can ask some questions. We'll talk more about that in the next section. Um, and then we have some tasks here. So I'm all up to date. That's my notifications piece. So remembering which lessons I'm on, how that works out. And then let's go back here and maybe ask a question. So we're in physical science, but what if I have a question about a cell? So what is a cell? I could ask that. I could ask it to compute nine divided by three. It's gonna answer those questions and help me out as I work my way through. So we're continuing to add to these pieces in terms of what Flexi can answer, as well as this is where uh, the student will see memory boost reminders. They'll see those memory boosts actually in the practice as well. So let's go back to the chapter or section before this, because the section before this had practice that I had completed as a student. Same deal, I have my review, Flexi and my lesson, but in the bottom right here, you can see a memory boost instead of that practice. That memory boost, Take a short break, let's try the next concept. Some little fun pieces there, but I can click on memory boost and it will actually show me my report on how I did for a student. And then I can click on the boost my memory and go in and try some extra questions and play around with it and see how it goes. So all sorts of different options from the review here, the questions asked on Flexi, related content, all the rest of that. We can see here some questions that students asked. I'm gonna go ahead and mute that so I can get see this piece try these questions or ask my own question here which is just going to pop open the chat window and then related content as well so all sorts of options and that related content here gives me the pieces that i have working here or you as a teacher can find it in the toolbar in the top right those are the components i talked about regarding students let's take a second and swap over and show the teacher side before I take some questions live. So I'm gonna go ahead and click in and show you a teacher piece. So here you can see the free assistant for every teacher. I'm logged in as my teacher demo account right here. And I'm gonna to go to a class. So let me pick a class that I'm working with. And I'm gonna go ahead and open up my class, fall 2021 class. And this would be true if I opened it up and I was using a CK12 class. Or if I was doing the same thing in Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, all of which have full integration with CK12. So here's my class assignments. This one happens to be a 2.0 assignment. I noted that in the title. 
And I'm just going to click on the assignment link, just like I would from one of those learning management systems as well. It's going to open up my class. Here I can see the lesson itself and then class insights in the top right. Now, because I've assigned this, if I'm in CK12, I'm going to just pick the class that I want to look at. If you're coming from a learning management, it will default to that class for you. And I can see how my students did based on the skill level and the practice versus their engagement. And then some insights and recommendations. In this case, students with low skill levels may be struggling with a prereq concept. That's a really key skill as things work their way through. So students have different components that they might struggle with if it's a kind of simpler math skill that's giving them more trouble when they're working with fractions and they're struggling with basic addition or key science topics that have prereqs. This is a recommendation for you to maybe double check to see if students need a refresher on that. And maybe that's why they're struggling with this concept. Or here, just like the flex cards allow students to try some extra questions, these questions here are questions that the students got wrong on their practice. So this might be a good place to start. And you can see kind of a flashcard, just like that flex card for students. Go ahead, start your class with that, use that as a part of your discussion and kind of work your way through as you're going through. So if you have a class and you have an assignment, go ahead and check out those insights. If you don't have a class set up and you wanna check it out, just open any Flexbook 2.0 lesson and click on this try demo class at the top. And I'm gonna go back one more sec. I can close this demo class. So again, if I opened up insights and I click try demo class at the top there, it's gonna show me an example class. Now, it is a demo class. So in this particular case, it might have something to do with math, even though the topic might be a random science topic, but it gives you a sense of the types of recommendations that we have, the types of insights that we have, how this student spent nine seconds on this lesson, this student spent six minutes on this lesson. The way I approach the fact that they're struggling is gonna be very different in that situation. So go ahead and check those out. And then you can actually click on any one of them and see the details and see the same information at the top and where they went down. And that's the piece that was there before, but this whole class piece is the newer part that we've been able to launch in the last year, which I think is extremely important as a former teacher to quickly be able to get a sense of how your students are doing there. Over here, we have Flexi with some notifications. I'm in a science book, so I can ask some questions and that's where I'll be able to ask those help questions for CK12 teachers, as well as clicking on my tests. I'm up to date, but if I have new insights for a class or work that needs to get turned in, all of those pieces will be available under that task part or that notification part as you go through. So I'm gonna stop there for a minute, see what we have for questions, and then we'll jump back into the keynote and go from there. Laramie, how are we doing? Um, looks like we have a couple of questions here that uh, we'd like to maybe kind of go over live. The first one is uh, if we customize the Flexbook so that it aligns with our scope and sequence, can we move the ch challenges so that they line up with what they're going over in class? So those challenges right now, um, for the most part, are for CK12 content. They show up based on the sections that are there. Um, you're not necessarily going to see them in a customized flexbook in the same way because they're built on the topics that are built into the CK12 book. Um, so somewhere down the road, you may start seeing those there, but that's not something that kind of you have control over. You don't even see it as a teacher. It's really just if a student is independently studying one of the CK12 flexbooks, they have ability to kind of check in, try out those extra pieces. Um, if you're doing customization work, by all means, feel free to customize our practice into a quiz and assign those as additional quote unquote challenges for students to work through um, that would be custom aligned to what you're doing for those particular topics. Excellent, thanks Katie. Um, also, uh, if I created my own Flexbook in a previous year, how can I get some of the new review options added in? That's a really good question. So the way our customization works, and we'll talk a little bit about the new customization tools um, in the next part of this webinar, but the customization is at the level that you customize at. So if you customize at a book level and your lessons have that review feature available, um, it should be pointing to CK12 content. Um, if, it, if you've actually changed the lesson itself, 
you kind of made a copy of that lesson in your library and broke that update chain because we would never, ever, ever want to override work that a teacher did that they want to share with their student. So then you'd want to go back to the original lesson and add that lesson in its new version into your Flexbook. Um, and that might help you kind of see some of those updates. But if you did customize the content within the lesson, that review may not match up the same way. Um, some of that content is coming from work that we've done with our lessons um, that eventually will work with user created content. Um, but how that plays out with the uh, user content um, is still in the works. And also, uh, just to kind of add to that, I will note that some of our content has both an older version, uh, like our original Flexbooks, and a newer Flexbook 2 version, where some of these other uh, more interactive uh, options are added in. You can either import the older version or the newer version for those books that have both, and you can take a Flexbook that you've customized and make it into a Flexbook 2 by importing that content. So that's another way to sort of get the uh, interactivity enhanced in your own own content. We have a great question in here that's actually what is a Flexbook? So this is kind of an update webinar. Um, our general intro webinar will be in December. So check that one out if you're brand new to CK12. Um, but this is an example of a Flexbook. So if I look at this Flexbook, it has kind of our book, larger book structure, and then sections within this. Um, we originally called it Flexbook just because it was flexible and changeable and I could adjust content and make it exactly what I wanted. Um, but this nice new platform is in the 2.0 platform. If you dig into explore and you explore all of our Flexbooks, you'll see some of that older content. Just be aware that the older content is less interactive. It doesn't have that related content. It doesn't have a lot of those features. Um, so when it makes sense, definitely stick in the 2.0 Flexbook environment. So maybe take one or two more questions and then we're going to jump back in and move forward from here. Um, looks like uh, we have a question about customizing a Flexbook. If, if I customize a Flexbook, can I keep it private for just my own students or is it public and anyone can access it? So think about it like a link that anyone with a link can access it. So um, if you only share it with your students, you're not going to be able to find it through the search features on CK12, but if your student chose to share it with someone else, um, then they would still be able to access that book. Um, so all copyright restrictions on our platform are valid for any content, regardless of whether it's published or not published, because you're sharing it outside of that piece. Um, so if you think about it in that way, in terms of like a document that you're sharing, if you choose to publish it, everyone can search for it. If you choose not to publish it, anyone who has the direct link can access it. Um, and I think the last question here is directly related to insights I was just talking about which is in order to see the insights, the student has to submit their practice. And that is correct. You will see the time they've spent so far, potentially. You'll see um, some of that pieces as they work their way through. Um, but to get the full engagement component, that's calculated when they submit their work. Um, and any recommendations or things like that are based on student work completed. Um, so until they turn in their work, we don't know actually what their final skill level is. So it's pretty hard to map them to that piece. So what I'm going to do, my team is doing a great job answering questions. I'm going to go ahead back and I'm going to share this keynote. And we're going to move forward a bit. And we just did our demo and Q&A. And I want to talk about the updates to our content. We will do a little more live and some resources as well. So the first thing, if you were around last year, you probably saw our summer flexlets. Um, we created kind of a prep for sixth grade, prep for seventh grade. Um, and we've redesigned these a bit. So now we have our flexlets that cover the essentials. So whether you're in sixth, seventh, or eighth grade math, some of our high school math, our core science concepts, um, we pull those together. And that way we've highlighted those concepts as kind of a mini book um, that can be used over the summer for students review, preview classes, throughout the school year, support struggling learners. Those are the ones they definitely wanna make sure they understand. Um, or consider it a great review before major tests. So these were designed so students could use them and review on their own, or you as a teacher could use them as a guide for some key pieces to cover. Our content and tech teams work super hard to make our platform engaging and full of opportunities for exploration and learning. And the science interactives are kind of one of my new favorite interactive options that you'll see on our site. And these are embedded directly within our science flexbook 2.0 lessons. 
So whether students match key terms and ideas, they scroll through a cycle or scenario, they label parts of a cell or a system, these interactives that we're rolling out give them a chance to test out their knowledge and provide them with feedback on their understanding and answers. So you'll see these start to pop up in various physical science, chemistry, and biology flexbook lessons. Um, and our team is adding more to those books throughout the year. So go ahead and keep an eye out on that. Our flexbook 2.0 science lessons also include vocabulary pop-ups. So students can use these to get a quick refresher or learn a new definition, as well as see relevant equations, units, and symbols. So just a simple extra update students can kind of hover over check their own skills get a refresher if they need it and they're good to go we're also working to make our adaptive practice even more of a learning opportunity by including direct feedback for our key questions and concepts we're starting with the adaptive practice in our interactive math for middle school and those that's in the flexbook 2.0 environment where we're making kind of all of these amazing updates and there you'll see feedback both to enhance student understanding when they get a question right and to help them determine where any misconceptions are held or mistakes were made for wrong answers. Our science team is starting to work on rolling these out for key concepts as well, so you might start seeing these pop up in those books accordingly. Now, in addition to for those of you that might not know, we have a built in Google Translate option for all of our core text. We also offer various resources from translated simulations to books created by partners in other countries. And these all kind of support learning in languages other than English as the primary language on our platform. The newest addition to this is our offerings in Flexbook 2.0 in Spanish. And these not only have that core text translated, but we also translated practice directly to match those lessons. So this allows students to learn and demonstrate their understanding of math and science for those particular topics. And this past year, we partnered with OTAN, which is California's Outreach and Technical Assistance Network, and they work to support adult learners. So they've taken a bunch of resources on CK12, ones that we've made, ones that our users have created, and compiled them into flexbooks that are designed to meet the needs of adult learners. Whether it's for adult basic education, or adult secondary education for both high school diplomacy or equivalency, high school diploma or equivalency. These resources are available for adult learners and also for those of you who work with adult learners and teach them. This page is a work in progress. OTAN is going to continue to both update the Flexbook content within there and add more resources as their team makes them available. You can access these by going to our subjects menu on our homepage or directly at ck12.org slash adult ed. And the last thing I want to talk about before I jump into live and show you those new content updates is our Flexbook editor updates. A lot of you have been asking questions about customizing and making your own content. And so for those of you that have been around for a little while, you might have noticed in the last year two really key updates to our editor. So one was at the table of contents level, where now you can easily add or move chapters and lessons. You don't even need to leave that table of contents to build out structure for a bunch of new reads. And you can even kind of pick where a lesson goes and jump it from you know chapter 26 to chapter one without having to drag and drop, which makes it so much simpler. Within the lesson itself, after we did our table of contents, we rolled out an enhanced editor. And this allows you to see more flexibility and font sizes, colors, text alignments, kind of some extra pieces that were added to that basic editor. And we added a bonus with some templates um, for some great call out boxes within there. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to our live page. So let's see if we work from here. I'm gonna go ahead and open up a window and share that. And as we go through from here, let's start by looking at some great interactives. So some of our newest interactives, I said we're in our biology book. So I could search for a topic or I can click on subjects and then click on biology, which will get me to the same book that I could access from our homepage. And I was asking about cells. So let's go into chapter two on cell biology and talk about maybe prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. So here we have the entrance to this lesson. It's in this 
biology textbook or flexbook for high school. We got some other ways to learn. That's that related content that shows up in your toolbar on the top right and that student review toolbar. And if I go ahead and I start, I go into the lesson itself. And this lesson really is more than just that core text. It has text, we have an image here. I used one of my highlighting and annotating options here to highlight some stuff. I could add a little note here. It says cell structure contains a video embedded. And here's a great new interactive. So if I click on this, you can see the cell membrane, cytoplasm, it actually works around and really highlights key elements of that cellular structure for students. And they can go ahead and explore and see how that plays out. So that's one option there. And then we have another example where we're talking about cell wall shows up in bacteria and plants, central vacuole, DNA, we have in all three of them. So you can explore which types of things show up in which type of life form. And I talked about templates. This is one of those template options or a little did you know call box has a little bit of different coloring header image and really kind of draws the eye and helps students check out different pieces. So if you're trying to highlight something, go ahead and check out those templates as you go through. We have a summary and some review questions and matching practice. Let's look at maybe one other one just so you get a different sense of opportunities for exploring. Let's go ahead and pick something from chemistry. And let's see what we get. We have our introduction to chemistry, pick chapter two again. So maybe states of matter. Those are always fun to work with. Again, here you'll see some different related content, a simulation, one of our little quick clicks interactives, definitely check those out at some point. Um, some videos, a real world application. I can drop into that lesson. Images, always starting with a great opening question for our science content and digging down into our interactive. Now this one is a little different because I actually have to make decisions on how this works. So nope, funny enough, a penny is not liquid. So let's go ahead and try that again. I'm gonna pick on this. I'm gonna go ahead and pick those pieces and it's gonna to try to add a note, but let's not do that. <laughs> let's click outside. And you can see here, I have some gas. We got those pieces and I can go ahead and match and it's gonna give that student feedback when they have the right kind of state of matter and the corresponding micro view and macro view of what that looks like. So that's some of our newest science interactives. I highly, highly recommend that you check that out. If we looked at, let's say our physics book, jump to another one. And let me just show you just so you can see, I could jump to it this way, or I could pick a topic. Let's say acceleration due to gravity. Now I'm already in this book. So if I wanna figure out where this fits, I could find it in this flexbook or across all of CK12. Let's go ahead and find it in this flexbook. We have this section, we have a real world application, a plix, a simulation, some really cool stuff. So our physics book is really interactive. It has been for a while. It has simulations embedded. It has other pieces included. Um, and that's one of the reasons why some of the newest interactive pieces are showing up in chemistry and biology specifically. But if we go ahead and we look at this, this is a great example of the vocabulary pop-up. Now, this is a hyperlink. That underlined green link, it's a hyperlink. It's gonna open up the lesson that we have on the concept of basic acceleration. So I don't need to click that and go explore another piece. But this uniform acceleration gives me the definition, a chance to read more and learn more about it, as well as the equation, symbol, and SI unit for it. Got some more notes. This is an example of an embedded simulation. Those have been around for a while. So we're gonna skip that on our updates section and we can keep going down. You can see more pieces and highlighted parts as you go through. But that's a great example for kind of that pop-up vocabulary component. I talked about interactive feedback. So let's go ahead. That's rolling out in our middle school math content. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to math, pick my subject and pick, let's say grade six. And we will pick Let's go with the first lesson on ratios, introducing ratios. We have here some related content. If I go into this lesson and I start this practice, this is where we're gonna get some of that feedback. So you as a teacher can preview this practice and kind of drop in as if you were a student. And here, if I get an answer here and I check it, it's not only gonna tell me if that answer is right or wrong, 
but it's gonna give me some really helpful information. So when writing your ratio, you don't have to subtract anything. The value on the numerator is gonna be on the left. The value on the denominator will be on the right. So we can go ahead and we can talk about how this plays out. So we're gonna try this again and let's see if we actually do this. I did teach math. So in hopes that I get this answer right, we're good to go. And students can even get a hint if they need to. But that feedback tells them what's happening, reminds them how it plays out, solves some of those misconceptions. Um, so as we said, we're starting to roll that out for our key concepts. So you'll see it more and more throughout our math and we just started science as well. The other three things that I talked about were related to content categories that we have added. So I'm gonna exit out of this and I'm gonna go ahead and look at what we have available. So if I click on subjects, you'll see up here our math and science flexlets. I can click on either one of those and it will take me to our flexlets page. Here's our math flexlets. Below that we have our science flexlets. Go ahead and explore those. This biology essentials has content from our bio book, just kind of trimmed down into a smaller book with just the ones that we thought were most essential for learning as you go through. A really great way to find our Spanish flex books is to click on explore, pick our broader, all the above, Flexbooks 1, Flexbooks 2, everything you want to work with, and then go ahead and choose all languages and pick Spanish and click search Flexbooks. And here you'll see that these Spanish Flexbooks, this little 2.0 symbol shows that they're in 2.0. And that means you're going to start seeing some of that practice available in those sections that's matched to that particular piece. This older book in Spanish is a great resource, but it's not going to have that attached practice as you go through. Um, so we launched it for our four basic ones at middle school and the algebra basics, um, and then a handful of science ones if we drop down to here that have that practice as well in Spanish. And the last part, if I click on subjects and I look over here at adult education, if I click on any one of those, it will take me to that section on the adult ed page, and you can go ahead and explore these books. And CK-12 is a primarily math and science book concept. Um, that's where we started. That's where our core content is. So when you see books like Econ for High School Diploma, that means that OTAN has taken content that our users have created and they've repackaged it into a book that makes sense for adult learners. Um, but that content was originally created by users like you. Um, so go ahead and feel free to add to our resources. We have about 10,000 published flexbooks on our website. Um, you can find those in our search and explore that way. The last piece that we did talk about was that customization. So I'm going to have, go ahead and click home. We're going to go back to CK12. CK12 logo will get you there as well. And I can click on my library here or using my name in the top right here, as well as in Flexbooks 2.0. And let me go ahead and continue making edits on a book that I'm working with. So a book that's created by me, we're going to stick to Flexbook 2.0. All I had to do on any book was click customize and I create something like this. And if I open my interactive algebra one book right here where it says choose, this is a book I've already started customizing. That's why it says this book is owned by me, jumpstart demo. This has a new title. It doesn't say CK12. And instead of hitting customize, which is what would be here, because I own it already, I'm going to continue making edits and update it. So if I drop into this editor, I can then see, uh, maybe I want to add a new chapter. So here's my review chapter. And I'm going to add a lesson within this. So I could add a new read to the bottom of this. Or if I'm inside this, I can add a new read. We're going to talk about functions review. And we're going to add another one that is expressions. And let's say I wanted to put that review up in this chapter. I'm more than happy to expand this chapter and drag it in as I go but I could just use our new move to option and move it to expressions. We'll always show up at the bottom and then I can kind of drag it wherever I want it to be. So this kind of new structure and functions in our table of contents just makes it much easier to navigate, to build structures. And then I can go in and I can start editing any particular lesson itself. I'm gonna go ahead into chapter one, let's say, my introduction of functions. And I am going to edit my basic linear functions one. Now, once I start editing that lesson, that's where the person that was asking about kind of, do I get to see these review updates? How does this work? 
at this point in time, this is no longer connected to the CK12 version of this lesson because I've started to make changes on it as I go through. But if you use our old editor, you'll love our alignment options, some extra kind of font sizing. Here we have our basic headers and paragraphs, but you have more color options, kind of different pieces and formatting, um, table options in here, properties. And for those that are unfamiliar, this X is our math editor. So you can build out equations or you can use our math converter if you know basic coding or you it's just something like two X plus three is five. Um, you could kind of use that to convert it into formatting, upload your images, upload or embed video or media. And this is that template that I was talking about. So I'm gonna go outside of a header because putting some things inside a header doesn't make sense, but I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna click on that. And you can see a basic element box, which we had before for callouts and different pieces, but also these other ones. Did you know? Can you tell? And making connections. So if you just wanna call something out, by all means, go ahead and use those, toss them into your lesson, and then you can edit and adjust. So um, connect these ideas. Go ahead and use those as you go through. So those are your basic editor updates. Some of them allow more formatting options. Some of them just make it easier to navigate. Um, but with that, how are we doing on questions? Um, actually, the team here has just been going through them like crazy, ripping through them really fast. It's been very impressive. Um, there is one about uh, other languages. You demoed a little earlier that there was some Spanish content. And we had a, a question about whether or not lessons were avail available in French. So I thought maybe we could show the translator. Sure. Yeah. So as I said, we have, you know, if you look at our subjects right here, there's some content in some other languages. Um, I think the India content is actually in English um, as a study for them, but Brazil and Chile, um, as well as Georgia, the country um, has some content there. Some of our translations, these are for our um, simulations. So there's, there's a random scattering of translations based on partnerships or based on volunteers that have offered to translate our physics simulations. Um, but as Laramie said, our core content can be translated using our translate option at the bottom of a page. So right here you see select language and I can go ahead and I can pick French and it's gonna translate this, the fonction linéaire um, as you go through. Now it is Google Translate. So in this particular case, it may not be perfect. Um, it has, the core content, some pieces, it's going to be able to translate. But this practice really is done in primary English. So when students use this as a refresher or as a useful piece as they go through, I do recommend that they do that to understand a concept and then swap it back to English. And that way they learn the English vocabulary that's going to need. And I may need to refresh this because some of this looks like it's kind of mop, messed up slightly in that translation. Um, but that's the vocabulary that they're going to need to understand for the practice. Um, so you do want to make sure that if they're using it in another language, that they understand the vocabulary they need to be successful on the assessment that goes with that. Um, and that's why that Spanish book is really important because not only is the lesson cleanly translated, was written, designed for learning in Spanish, but the matching practices as well. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Um, and then one other question about customization. You showed that you can add a lesson to a, a customized Flexbook. And there was a user pointed out that sometimes there are uh, pieces of content that cross over different subjects. So if, if they're customizing, say, a, a physics textbook, a uh, Flexbook, I'm sorry, can they add in content from like chemistry? Sure. So let's say, well, you just said adding content from chemistry. So let's go ahead to a chembook. And if I'm looking at the lesson that I'm starting with, option one is to customize, which makes a copy of the book structure in my library. I can change the title. I can reorder the scope and sequence, but all the lessons point to CK12 stuff. So those will have the newest, greatest features if I refresh that. Um, but instead of clicking customize, I can pick add to Flexbook 2.0. If I'm in a Flexbook 2.0, I can only stay there. If you're in 1.0, you can kind of add to any type of Flexbook. And from here, I can create a new one, or this is chemistry. So I happen to have an interactive physics for high school book. So I can go ahead and add it to there. If I click okay, you'll see this starts with the introduction to chemistry. 
And if I go to my library, just click on my name, click on library at the top right. And from here, this interactive physics for high school book was just updated by me. You do wanna make sure that you're not actively editing and actively adding, adding at the same time. Make sure that you've saved all of your edits and then you go explore. And you'll see that partway down, we have the whole chem book. And I could go in and edit this and remove the chapters I didn't want. But that's a case of instead of customizing and creating a new book, you just use the add to Flexbook and pull in a lesson or a whole book into a book that you're already working on. Awesome, thanks again, Katie. Um, I think that's it. Uh, okay, we're all I'm gonna go ahead and show some resources then, just for those of you guys, that, especially those of you that are newer, um, let me go ahead and share our resource piece. So we did just do a demo there. Um, one place that will be really helpful, um, especially those of you that are new to customization is our YouTube channel, our quick overview videos. Um, I just did a recent update to them. So there's now about 30 or so videos one to five minutes long maybe and you can access this from the bottom of the webinars page so just scroll down from that page or go straight to our youtube channel um, and these will show you how to explore customize assign see student progress all the rest of that so definitely check that out as a great resource last year we released a series of these one-stop resources for using ck12 with a learning management system so if you are using google classroom or canvas or schoology check out those pages you can access them at those direct links, g-classroom, Canvas, or Schoology at the end of ck12.org. And each page has a general overview, step-by-step -step guides, and a video walkthroughs to help you. So some of those videos from the quick overview page are at the bottom, and then right above it is a video to kind of the core, maybe 10, 15, 20-minute explanation of how this particular platform works with CK12. Um, you can access it, as I said, through the direct links, or if you go to our footer to our tools and apps page, and then click on the matching link for Google Classroom, Canvas, or Schoology, you can get to these pages. Last year, we were super thrilled to announce that we relaunched our certified educator program that started in 2017. We relaunched it last year as a self-paced professional development opportunity. We just did a recent update to the videos and resources for this. So go ahead and dive in to get a deeper understanding of all that we offer here at CK12. And if you were one of those people who joined it last year and completed it already, feel free to go back and check out the updated videos. We kind of push those out to be accessible to anyone um, so you can see what's new. A lot of it I covered today, so you're good to go as well. And if you're brand new, go ahead and join our community of educators that are becoming certified, this program has no cost and you can do it on your own schedule. Go to ck12.org slash certified or navigate from our explore menu and then click join to register for the program and you'll be dropped directly into a class to get started. A couple other great quick links and resources, um, our webinars page, which is accessible through the explore menu as well as at ck12.org slash webinars. Um, we have a webinar coming up in December. For those of you that are new, that is a great introductory webinar to CK12. That's on flexible learning, and it includes both a general introduction as well as strategies to use CK12 and implement it in a class. And you can register for that on our webinars page already. So go ahead there and check that out, as well as archived recordings of our previous webinars. And this one will be posted there as well. Testimonials. It's found in the footer under the Explore menu or at ck12.org slash testimonials. And that's a great place to hear from students and educators about CK12 products, how they're being used in the classroom, and much more. We traveled around the country prior to COVID, and so we have a variety of stories, reasons to use CK12, and strategies for implementation that others have shared with us. I always find it so relevant and valid to hear directly from users of CK12. Feel free to browse or filter that based on a particular role or topic. Our overview page. So if you wanna learn more about our platform and resources, or you want an easy page to share with your colleagues, you can go to ck12.org slash overview or click on CK12 resources. And there's a brochure there. It's a little one page flyer that you can download and share. And finally, and potentially most importantly, ck12.org slash help. That brings you to our support center um, where you can find quick articles and tips for using CK12. Feel free to use that link or just click on help where you see it on our website. So with that, I wanna thank you all for joining us. We are gonna stay on and answer any last questions, but you can connect with us on social media using at CK12 Foundation. If you're on one of these platforms and you need to find us, just search CK12 Foundation. So make sure to include that piece. And you can even find our latest blog post on Medium by searching that way. 
we're going to stay on for questions you might have. If you have questions in the future, reach out to us at support at ck12.org. So how are we doing on questions? That was that was fantastic. You went through everything so fast. Um, we've been all caught up with questions here on the panel. I don't see anything that's outstanding, so we can give everybody another minute or so. But I think I think you covered it pretty clearly. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, thank you all for joining us then. Um, if you do discover that you have questions, go ahead and reach out to us at support. And we are more than happy to send some suggestions, resources, some of those I just mentioned back your way and answer your questions then. With that, have a great night, morning, or wherever you are. Thanks.